Graphene has almost limitless potential. It's so light and so thin, but it's strong and it's dynamic. The visions, the predictions of sci-fi writers and tech gurus are finally within our grasp. It's 10 years since graphene was first isolated at the University of Manchester. Forecasters immediately predicted that the wonder material would change the world. And the scientists that discovered it, by applying sticky tape to a layer of graphite, won a Nobel Prize. But so far, its most eye-catching innovation is a lighter, stronger head tennis racket. Here in the laboratories of the University of Manchester, researchers are making and working with graphene, the revolutionary 2D material that's super strong, super conductive, but also very difficult to work with. I'm just like this, because just one speck of dust could ruin a month's worth of experiments. So how can this one atom thick layer of carbon be used? You can either start with graphite, which is basically many layers of graphene, and you can break it down into smaller pieces, and when you go smaller and smaller, ultimately you get little bits of single layers of graphite, which is graphene. And then this is dis dissolved or dispersed in a, in a liquid like water to make some kind of ink, which you can then use for things like printing or in incorporating it into composites for strength, etc. The other way of making graphene, you start with a gas, like methane, which contains carbon, and then you deposit the carbon on a surface, and then that becomes a coating of graphene, which you can then use for things like touchscreen applications and electronics and stuff like that. Just around the corner, a new lab is taking shape, the National Graphene Institute. The £61 million centre will house researchers alongside industrial partners, collaborating to find ways to make it easier to use and to apply in such products as aircraft wings, smartphones and computer chips. £61 million is going to create the largest single research facility in graphene we believe in the world. It's around 7,500 square metres, but it will bring together some of those academics working on graphene together with our industrial partners to start collaborating around these projects which will take the graphene from the science into these applications for the future. George Osborne, the Chancellor, has seized on graphene as a symbol of how the UK can still produce industrial breakthroughs. He is determined that it should also create practical products with graphene that bring in crucial export earnings. There are a handful of companies in the UK working with graphene and three have listed on the stock market in the last year alone. But of at least 12,800 graphene-related patents registered in the last five years, just a handful are from the UK, according to Cambridge IP, a technology strategy consultancy. China, where three production facilities opened last year, accounted for more than 80% of applications for patents between 2012 and 2013, while companies such as Samsung of Korea and IBM of the US are spending tens of millions of dollars. The UK has a great history of technological innovation and a poor record of turning it into products. Here at the Manchester Museum of Science and Industry is Baby, built in 1948 as the world's first stored programme computer. But it was the Americans who went on to create the PC. So to encourage more investment in technology business in the UK, we need to get the basics first, and that is great science and great research. And I think we've done a lot of good things already to do that. Uh, in the academic institutions in the UK. That's the first step. The next thing you need to do is you need to stimulate more private investment into the commercialization of those technologies through license agreements and also through spin-out companies. Um, there are some things around that in around sort of promoting angel investment, but the institutional investment requires stimulation and, and probably some form of public sector support to stimulate, stimulate that investment is, is required. Investors may have to be patient, it took decades for materials such as silicon and carbon fibre to find mass market uses. Analysts say the graphene market might be worth just $390 million even in 10 years time, up from $30 million today. It will probably take a long time for, for graphene materials to become mainstream. There are, there are some things where graphene's already in, in products, it's, it's in um, sports equipment, um, but in other areas it will take a long time to, to really to transform those applications, but that's, that's the process of innovation, making the most of that basic research and, and turning it into something that will, will change lives. Mr Baker hopes to have a graphene drone flying within months. That might not change the world, 
but it would show the world that graphene has a potentially lucrative future. Andrew Bounds, Financial Times, Manchester.